A big welcome back to the Halet Nation. Today we've got a roughly 9,200 pound Arctic Wolf bunkhouse coming in for you, the 321BH. Um, it might be a little high, a little shy of that 9,200 pound mark. It really kind of just depends on how you have it equipped. Um, there are some half tons whose tow ratings will fit into that. There are even rarer half tons whose payload ratings will handle the hitch weight of this Arctic Wolf. That being said, for the most part, I'd feel a lot better if your truck started with a two and not a one on that, uh, you know, model number, a 250, a 2500, something like that. This is a family fun favorite floor plan here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, giving us a bath and a half without being 45 feet long and $90,000. That is not an easy series of features to find. There's a few others out there in the industry, but not many. Couple that with the light weight uh, of this one, comparatively speaking, and the light colored interior. You've got not only that awesome 12 volt fridge inside, but a massive 5.7 cubic foot outdoor fridge and freezer. This thing literally has two fridges and freezers, which is very cool. It's got two air conditioners. It's got two bathrooms. It's got well, multiple sleeping zones. And what's cool is this one's not good for just kids. The living room sleepers are big adult size. So um, if you do want to bring extended family or your own friends and their kids, this one can haul half the neighborhood. <laughs> And this model has remained largely unchanged from the past couple seasons, and that is only good news for you folks. This is a great layout. It didn't need a lot of changing, kind of like an alligator. Nature made it right. Hasn't had to change for pff, eons, you know? <laughs> so right up front here, I mentioned that this is good not just for kids. That's a trifold sleeper sofa. That's like a seven foot dinette. Those are things that adults and big, big kids can sleep on if need be, or Again, if you want to bring like a whole bunch of extended family or some friends, you can have a private sleeping space back there for a couple individuals. You can have sleeping space up here. You've got your master sleeper up front for a couple adults real easy. It doesn't have to be just kids. And I love these big windows. You saw with our quick kind of flash flyby footage, those big giant windows just letting a flood of light in here. You may have noticed there is um, some kind of LED lighting on the inside of this and it is like, it's extreme. Cool thing is, kind of like that. If it's too much for you, you don't have to use it. Nothing says you have to use it. Uh, the air conditioners on these, by the way, uh, they are the quieter Coleman kind of air conditioners, which I know a lot of people really enjoy. I'm, uh, you know, not certainly opposed to a quieter running air conditioner myself. The uh, little hang tag hanging from that thing at the roof, that is actually like a kind of subwoofer, a, you know, speaker enhancer built into the roof there to give you a little bit better sound on that sound system. We are looking at that 12 volt DC compressor fridge and we will look at the rest of the uh, kitchen cabinetry all opened up in a few minutes. I just kind of want to get you through this thing. I like that sliding door for the rear room as well. It's not a curtain. As we move up though, you might notice no vents in the floor. Keeping her nice and easy to clean. Very handy, especially in a bunkhouse model like this where you got a lot of little bodies hopping in and out and in and out and in and out. And that is why having this half bath with a direct entry door right here is one of your best features on this RV because it keeps the uh, dirt and the foot traffic in this RV down to a minimum. Uh, it is definitely uh, adult sized, adult friendly. I can fit into that thing absolutely no sweat as you can see. And I was actually quite happy with all the leg room there and that is porcelain by the way sealed edge counters through the whole camper and you might see this little remote control over here that is the easiest way ever to be able to operate the big xl vent fan that we have up here in the ceiling so that you know you don't have to like try to take a broomstick and poke your way at some sort of switch all the way up there you know you can be sitting on the toilet doing whatever you got to do and you can activate deactivate that uh did 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 do <sighs> crap that'll go in the highlight reel deactivate that thing as needed now back here uh this bunk room can also as we're seeing here convert into like a second living room that's a 300 pound rated bunk by the way now down here it has something a lot of folks are looking for i know and that is a sofa in the bunk room not just 
a uh, like a uh, one of those cube folding jobs. And what that's going to do for us, if we take note, there's triple drawer extension down here. So you've got yourself some great dresser space already here in this bedroom. But as you notice, that sofa can easily fold down into a sleeper. You can flip down the 300 pound rated bunk above that and get yourself some great sleeping capacity back here. <laughs> but I feel like an infomercial, but wait, there's more. As we go back past this breeze through window, we go over to what I like to call a big kid bunk. It is a little bit wider bed. It's still uh, like a, a short kind of camp length, which is pretty normal in the RV industry across almost everybody at this stage, but it's wider. So if you got a big kid who needs to sleep corner to corner, you got a great spot to do it right there. Uh, we have ourselves a ladder built right in so you don't have to throw the kids into the upper bed. If I take a seat on the sofa, you can see that should you choose to, you have the perfect place over here to add some entertainment. Now, whether you do that or don't, that's up to you. You can, I don't recommend it. Little kids might try to climb up that wall right there. Uh, this is just kind of a proactive tip from your Uncle Josh. Tell the kids to use the ladder, not the shells when they're climbing. I don't believe those shells are going to fail or anything, but they're not made for it. Now, I mentioned this is all sealed edge countertop stuff, but something they do on their tables, and you'll see this done again up in the bedroom, they give it like a simulated live edge. It's just a really cool little detail that they put on these. That, you know, this is a very price smart series of fifth wheels. They're very all thriller, no filler, like no diminishing returns kind of RV brand. I have a lot of respect for Arctic for that. Um, but, it, it does mean sometimes there are some things they don't do, but yet they still find a way to incorporate some nice little details here and there. It's just, it's impressive what all they do totally put together. I mentioned how that is a tri-fold sleeper. You see you got your electric space heating fireplace over there. Now, uh, the entertainment center on this one is a secondary feature. The idea behind this floor plan is to be able to sleep, seat, and feed as many people as possible within the half bath uh, size of this RV. So if you do decide you want to go with some kind of fancy entertainment center, I think one of the first things I would do, and I hope you appreciate this candor, I'm willing to show you even where I think an RV could be improved, but I understand why they did what they did. If, you, if, if it was me, and if I was going to add a TV, I would take out that fixed mount TV bracket, I would install a nice swing arm, and you see that they gave you plenty of room here for a big screen. I would put a TV that can pivot around for easy facing. Oop, I'm running into a wall to my sofa and dinette. By the way, I didn't mention this, but did you catch that little USB plug there right in the middle of your seating? That will be a very heavily used feature. Trust me on that one. Uh, now, as we work our way around, I said we'd start digging through all the kitchen stuff. We're actually gonna start up yonder. Now, I went ahead and kicked that lighting back on, that accent lighting, just to draw attention to the fact that it doesn't have to be just uh, for daytime use. That makes a really excellent nightlight, uh, especially if you got little kids who maybe need to get up and down, or if you do have those guests who aren't familiar with your RV, they'll appreciate the ability that you know to be able to see where they're going at night. That big bonus drawer below the oven is a nice touch right there. Nice space for a wastebasket. You could make that a little bit bigger, perhaps, um, if you remove some of that uh, little kind of protective paneling. But that is there to make sure that shifting cargo doesn't like cause something to like smash into a fitting on the water uh, heater back there. Which, by the way, the water heater located centrally in this RV is a brilliant decision. That is a, something that people don't think about because you can't usually see it. When the water heater's in the middle of the RV, that means it wastes less hot water trying to pump the hot water to everything else. Especially right next to the kitchen like this, very close to the bathroom. Really, really, really good design decision here. Uh, the segmented top drawer is a personal favorite feature. Notice how those are plywood boxed. That is an area where some manufacturers will really save some money by giving you particle board with a sticker wrap, and you can see that they're not doing that here. That is the whole thing with Arctic. They do everything that matters and nothing that doesn't. That's what I mean by all thriller, no filler. That beautiful, big, black, stainless sink. I love the eye-catching nature of that. And this is a little uh, hand sanitizer pump, which, given our current global climate, I think is a, uh, a very... Uh, smart decision, but you could easily make that for like hand soaps if you're interested. A shelf in this big overhead cabinet means you just gain double the storage capacity, which obviously is a uh, you know good thing. And then as we work our way around over here, you can see how they even add some storage above that big 12, uh, no, I'm sorry, 10.7 cubic foot uh, compressor fridge. So if you're not familiar, these are uh, larger capacity versus a two-way. They cool faster. Uh, they don't have to be level. They're traveling safe.
And if you ever want to turn one off, there's the switch for it right there. You hold the set button on the right for 10 seconds, she shuts herself down. 10 seconds does seem arbitrarily long, but it's also not that big a deal, and it's not something you're probably really going to be doing very much. And in case you're curious, this little T-handle is a travel lock to make sure them doors don't go flying and open when you're traveling, because nobody wants their ketchup on the floor. That will not cut the mustard. Now, you might have wondered where the sink cover went. I almost forgot to talk about this. If we look over here, a couple cool things. First of all, that sink cover can very easily double as a stovetop side splash that is nice and easy to clean. And this little notch down here is actually there so that when you put the sink cover in place in transit, it doesn't jiggle bang around and wiggle loose. That corresponds with this little notch right here. But <laughs> it unintentionally works perfectly for fitting over there. Now this little cutting board job here, this is a very cool feature. I first saw this done um, in Arctic Wolf's cousin, the Cherokee Wolfpack toy haulers. When you're not using it, just like the baggage doors have magnet holdbacks, there's a quick little magnet latch back there. And the uh, stovetop glass cover can act as its own backsplash. So you've got yourself backsplash, side splash. Uh, the whole thing is just a big old fun splash. I don't know. I don't know where it's going with that. I know it definitely didn't land where I wanted it to, but hey, whatever. Down here below the steps, by the way, you have yourself uh, a nice little kind of shoe cubby. I actually mentioned that. Uh, at the end of last season, I said, hey, what do you guys think of a flip-top storage trunk here or a little shoe cubby? More people said shoe cubby, and Arctic said, no sweat, we'll make it happen. Just a really good indicator that this is a brand that is really in tune with what people are asking for. And this right here is something I don't know if I've ever taken the time to showcase, but if you look at one of the flyers that comes in these Arctic Wolves, up in the corner, you see this uh, group of fellows right here. These are some of the core people that help make a lot of what happens in the uh, Cherokee uh, facility possible. And a lot of those individuals right there are actually like um, factory line managers. And I thought that that was really cool, the way that Cherokee really showcases their people. You never usually get to see the people who work behind the scenes like that. And here Cherokee's willing to put them front and center for you. It's just, it, it, it's, I think it's, what, it's telling you that it's the people that make the difference at Cherokee. And they're letting you get to meet them, at least on some level, you know? And it's very cool that Arctic Wolf is still including like a conventional switch panel here for awnings and slides and lights in your water pump and stuff like that. But up top, they also have the full digital version of the LCI-1 control system. And one of the key benefits there is that can communicate with your leveling system. So if when you're getting hitched up, if you need to raise or lower the nose of the RV, you can do that without having to have somebody on the ground in a potentially dangerous situation between the truck and the trailer. Uh, where you can actually sit there and you can line a sight at yourself and raise it up and down as required. Just not something you have to do, but it's cool that they allow for it. Sliding pocket privacy door for the bathroom and some excellent leg room for a big person like me in front of yet another porcelain foot flush stool. That is a 30 by 36 shower, which is also plenty enough for a big goofball like me. And she's six and a half foot tall. You guessed it. Great for a big goofball like me. <laughs> they also have themselves an XL vent fan here, just like you saw in the uh, half bathroom. That one doesn't have remote control because you don't need it because you can actually reach that one. Now over here, uh, the uh, countertops with the sealed edge kind of things, that trend continues, but they have themselves a very large sink in here. But yet, you still have room on either side of it if you want to have like a little toothbrush holder or something, you can do that. Now down here, they left you a spot for a little waste basket. There is, remember the, the little removable panels to protect things that shift in transit? That's more of what you're seeing over here. Again, you could expand your storage here a little bit if you wanted. I do think that they were a little conservative there, but I would rather have a manufacturer protect me uh, from my own maybe lack of intelligence on things sometimes rather than just take the chance that, oops, he might break something, now it's his fault. That is a full big medicine cabinet. And then over here, we actually have a nice dedicated place for towels in this uh, bathroom up here so that you don't have to do the nudist camp streak through the camper, which uh, to this date is why my wife still needs therapy. <laughs> Now you can see as we work our way past the 60 by 8 queen bed, there is no ankle break and step of death. And I want to point something else out here. You see where it says relax. Relax is what it says in an Arctic Wolf bedroom when it is a north-south queen bed. Whereas the east-west bed slides will say suite. 
and there's one significant difference between them. The Relax models do not have a standard second air conditioner, as you see we have optioned here in this 321. The way we see this is that this is a big camper with a lot of cubic foot of space, and having that private slide in the back and a private bedroom up front, we really thought the extra 15,000 BTUs of Coleman quiet, cool, and air conditioning power would be uh, very welcome here. That, again, a high-dollar, non-standard feature that we include for you here at Halo RV. If, if we had a 321 in stock without that, or any dealer, could they add an air conditioner? Yes, but for a chunk more money than when it's done from the factory level, which is why we like to do it that way. Just like everything else, that accent light there, you could turn off if you don't uh, want it on the whole time. Um, what else was I going to tell you about in here? I like the little radius edges on those uh, little closet corners there, so you don't have a big sharp thing jabbing you uh, by any stretch. And if we look down below, you can see full easy lift storage below that bed and drawers in those side stands. There's also little kind of slipper storage below them. And remember, we we're going to tell you about more of that sealed edge countertop kind of simulated live edge stuff over here. Sorry if the camera lurched a little bit. I got hit by the door falling on me. Now, both sides of the bed have their own household and USB plugs. That funky thing on the right right there, it does have two USB plugs on it, but basically it's a mount point for a specific uh, Bluetooth speaker. Very similar to what Furion does in a lot of things. Now, in an Arctic Wolf, I like to get in here and turn you around real quick like a record baby. First of all, light switches right where you can reach them, either when you're leaving the bedroom or when you're walking in, which just makes far too much sense for normal RV production, doesn't it? <laughs> I swear sometimes where they put the switches, I'm like, do you even camp, bro? Up top here, if you want to add a TV, you got the perfect spot for it. And then you got yourself just that big, let me get you up here a little closer, dedicated closet space built right in here, occupying where some RVs will do a giant shower, but then you're going to lack on storage. So this one doesn't have a closet slide in the bedroom, but instead you're getting all this extra space with that little shoe garage down below. This is awesome. And there's a reason you're seeing almost every other brand copy what Arctic Wolf's been doing here for a couple seasons now, for good reason. Now with the slide closed here, you'll be able to get through uh, around that countertop through most of the living room pretty darn easily. And holy cow, look at this. When you open those windows, it just floods the camper. It just, it's like it washes everything out of the camera even. Now, um, you'll be able to get through here. You'll be able to sit down, have a quick bite to eat. However, just due to the way that you're jamming a whole lot into as compact a space as possible, with the slide closed, um, you're not going to be able to open that door. And unless you're going to like help pick one of the kids up and like lift them through into the bunk room, you're probably not going to get back there either. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, you want to kind of plan and pack ahead. Now remember, you've got your full bathroom upstairs. So accessing that is absolutely no problem. And you do have that half bath accessible from outside, though why you would necessarily need to do that for transit, I don't know. You can get to the fridge, you can get to the master bed, you can get to the bathroom. And I suppose you could probably just kind of toss some duffel bags through that little slot back there. But you don't necessarily have full access. But most of the time when you're in a bigger RV like this, that just kind of goes with the territory. Now just to kind of illustrate a point, right there you see the window, but when we cross the horizontal line, Alakazam, she's gone, man. And that's uh, that, that glass front door that they're using on the Cherokee family stuff now. It just, it's got that very cool kind of now you see it, now you don't sort of effect. And also notice how they're doing the stable steps on both entry doors here, which is something very few RVs are really doing right now. Like Rockwood's one of the very few that I see do that, and they're doing it over here uh, on this uh, Arctic Wolf, you know. Um, up front, we've got, this is our pass-through compartment. I like the motion lighting on both sides of the pass-through. It's simple, it's easy, it's effective. You see there's TV hookups in there, and that's what this little guy is here. If you have the TV hooked up, you can leave the baggage door closed and feed your TV cables through that right there. A little spot to keep the old doggo leashed up is always a fan favorite feature. We have standard auto leveling on here. Arctic's been doing that for a couple years, and I actually credit them and Cougar, uh, those two brands specifically, for being the reason that auto leveling has has uh, become almost standard across nearly all fifth wheels at this stage. And curb appeal. Good gravy. These things have curb appeal for days on them, don't they? I love the way these things look. They just, they catch your eye. But what I like too is previously they were like, you know, they had the white and the gray base, but then they had this like neon almost bright blue. And there's still some blue accents. You can see them in there, but it's really toned down. And it really feels like Arctic Wolf is 
growing up, like they're maturing, you know. She's slide awning ready. If you look real close, you can see the little prep points up there on the top corners of the slide. So if you choose to do something like that, it'll make it a little simpler and easier for you. Left this one closed so you can see the magnet hold back right there, as well as the uh, compression latch. A lot of people are going to call that a slam latch. I'll probably slip and call it that myself at some point. That is technically a compression latch. The only difference is you should kind of carefully push it shut. And an enclosed heated underbelly. These have a very respectable extended season kind of program here. We got a one, two, three sweet feature Trinity back here for you. At the bottom, a folding cargo rack, which is uh, a non-standard piece of equipment. It is a very common option. Many dealers do apply to their Arctic Wolves though. However, as we work our way up, you see that roof ladder. That is not a thing that you find on, uh, I, I would say, the majority of Arctic Wolves, because that is actually what's called a uh, hidden option, where it's, there, it's available and they can do it at the factory, it's just not always on the build sheet, although I think they're finally starting to open that up. But if you're looking really close next to that ladder, you can actually see not just backup camera prep, at the time of this filming, they are including rear view observation cameras and the handheld monitor, of course, to go with it, uh, on these Arctic Wolf RVs from the factory. That is a really cool thing. Now, uh, there are a lot of RV companies who are doing something like that as something of like a fall incentive package. It is possible that as the year goes on, that uh, object, that rear camera, could actually phase out of the standard production of Arctic Wolves. But at the time of this filming, it's there. So that is one of those things. I'm kind of just making sure that you folks know what you're getting into. If uh, you know, it's two or three months after this uh, footage has published. Make sure you give our team a call. Make sure the RV has the exact features that you're seeking. Uh, because sometimes, you know, I can't, I won't always go out and update footage for every little nut, bolt, and widget. But I do want to make sure you're aware. Now, this is that cool thing I was telling you here. This is that combination fridge and freezer, like 5.7 I think seven total cubic foot on this thing. It is awesome. The RV has 16.4 total cubic foot of cold storage capacity which rocks. Now, kind of like both entry doors are anti-slam. They have the window, they have the steps. They also both have the nice larger handle. And this can get you in and out real quick to the half bath. And then remember, this door does deadbolt, so you don't gotta worry about anybody walking in on you. Uh, unless, of course, it's Smokey the Bear and uh, he's having himself a Taco Tuesday emergency. Then he's gonna come through that door and he's gonna get you out of his way. It has recently come to my attention that Smokey the Bear is actually allergic to some of the spices that are uh, in, you know, common taco type food. So uh, he probably would not be partaking in Taco Tuesday. Heh, the things you learn every day, you know, crazy. I had no idea. Uh, something else I want to point out. You do have a full outside shower over here on the door side of the RV. And it's going to throw you off. It seems a little funny why the black tank flushes over here instead of over by the rest of the hookups. The short answer is this is the closest location to the black tank and that makes the black tank flush the most effective. And frankly, at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that thing works, right? Because <laughs> that's not something you want to only guess is working, you wanna make sure it's flushing out your tank. A couple of real simple things I like here on the roof also. These air conditioners, I haven't mentioned this, I don't believe, but these are all 15,000 BTU air units. That's all Arctic uses. They don't do any 13.5s. So uh, again, that's an optional second air above the bedroom we're looking at, but that's the same big AC that's like you get on like a Montana, a pinnacle fifth wheel here at Halet RV. It has the same cooling system. The uh, LCI hot spot kind of prep point here, something I like about that, is you unscrew the hatch from the top you're not actually changing any factory install work. So if you do decide to utilize that feature, you haven't voided any sort of warranty features. Um, and two more things up here. This is the solar panel that comes with the uh, 50 watt juice pack. If you want to, you can add another of those 50 watt panels without rewiring anything, like you've got a nice little spot right there to do it. And you can upgrade to 100 watts of total solar power, which is very nice for keeping the batteries topped off and some extra dry camp time. And then you see these little white hockey puck jobs. And if I sound like I'm out of breath, it's because I'm a little bit out of shape right now. I climbed that ladder and the air is cold up here, man. I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> anyway, that thing right there, not really important for cold camping, but for hot camping, it will let the heat that builds up inside the roof construction itself exhaust and breathe out. And that in conjunction with those two big air conditioners that we talked about makes this one heck of a great camper for the hot climate camping that frankly, most of us do. Like people ask all the time, oh, are these things four seasons? But the fact is like 98% of us don't camp when the snowflakes are flying. 
and that's who Arctic is really appealing to. The 98% of folks who are going to use this thing when it's warm out or maybe when it gets a little chilly, like right now it's 28 degrees, this RV is going to be fine. It's, it's not, you know, it, not everything needs to be rated down to like negative Arctic Alaska temperatures, brother. Now something else here I want to give Arctic some credit for. Their ladders, when you add these here, this optional piece of equipment we've added at Halet RV, you see how high up it sticks. Now, keep in mind, it's on the very back of a tapered roof, so it's not nearly the highest point on the RV. But by sticking up so high, it actually gives you plenty to hold on to, and it is just a safer up-down experience. And as a person who climbs up and down ladders professionally, that's something I appreciate. Good job, Arctic. So if you are ready to sink your fangs, wolf pun into some adventure give us a call here this arctic wolf might be for you and do me a favor folks leave us a comment or two uh as you watch the video let me know what you like and if there's one thing you could change what would that be really appreciate knowing that kind of stuff it really helps us make sure that we're always going the right direction for you here at our family owned and operated facility and remember if you need hitching if you need parts if you need financing if you need the rv delivered we do all that stuff we just don't do any of that hidden fee nonsense so if that sounds easy, because camping's supposed to just be about fun and easy, give us a call. We're ready to meet you. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone.